the translator by user race. Being a slave sucks officially we are a client race. But in reality, we were thoroughly and completely conquered and enslaved. Our kind is called ones. We are, or, more accurately, were, a young race of peaceful beings, focused on science, commerce and arts. When we developed FTL travel, we met two other sentient races relatively close to us. And we were so happy we were not alone in the universe our technology was a little bit more advanced. So we were the ones that developed the translators. These tools really strengthened the relations with our neighbors, and our three planets formed the core of what we later named the United Races Federation. As our FTL capabilities became more and more advanced, we explored further and further, we met some other races, and we were always happy to include them into our federation. Commerce flourished, science advanced and peace endured. Sure, there were some conflicts here and there, but nothing serious. All disputes were solved diplomatically by the Federation Council. After all, the universe, in its infinity, was big enough for everyone. And then, we were discovered by the Slanoth Empire, a race of hunters, conquerors and meat eaters. They did not have an economy based on commerce, or science, or production. No, they conquered anyone they met, and then extracted tribute. We tried diplomacy, but our requests for peace were scorned. We tried to defend, but our military was totally unprepared for the brutality of the Slamath. In less than a year, all 12 races of the Federation had been forced to unconditionally surrender. Now, our planet's most precious resources are sent steadily towards our masters. They took and adapted all useful technology. All of our factories are now producing goods that will end up in their grabby paws. Thousands of people just disappear every year, and there were suspicions that the Slanoth were kidnapping them, ship them back to their worlds, and butcher them. Our most brilliant minds end up working for the Slanoth, in what is basically slavery. And this is how we come to my part in this story. I am a diplomat and a translator on the The Talon Slanoth flagship of the Imperial Third Army. I put diplomat between quotation marks, because there is no actual diplomacy involved when it comes to the Slanoth. My job is to calibrate the translator for each new race they find, so they can transmit their threats, and their requests for unconditional surrender. Then, I just shrink away in a corner of the bridge and watch the massacre that follows. I am needed again at the end, to make sure the translator properly transmits all the Slanoth instructions and demands to the newly conquered species. I am also required to do a lot of reports on the new species, mainly of their resources, capabilities, observable advanced technology that the Slanoth can steal, adapt, and use. This is the part of my job that I hate the most. All Slanoth flagships used a turn. One of my people, as translators, simply because the devices are too unmade, and we can calibrate them, maintain and repair them, because we do this for the Slanoth. All the other races hate us, but we don't do this by choice. The Slanoth are expert slavers. They know exactly how to break anyone into submission. We either do what we are told, or, a single command is sent back to our planet, and our families disappear and we all suspect that means they are eaten. Since the conquering of our federation, I have witnessed the Slanoth conquering six more new races. Each time it was more or less the same. The Slanoth discover a race, they scout until they know how much the race has expanded, they bring overwhelming force, they conquer, and then they bleed dry their newest victim. My secret hope was that someday, the Slanoth, will meet someone tougher than them. Someone that would defeat them, and allow all of us to rebel, to break free. But, in almost 20 years of slavery, my hopes had shriveled away to little more than nothing. That is until the fleet I was stationed on, received orders to head with all speed to some faraway coordinates, to help the Imperial First Army, with the conquering of a new species, the Terrans. At first, I thought nothing of it, but then it dawned on me, we were required to help meaning that the Imperial First Army couldn't conquer the species by itself this was a very big deal. 
no other conquest I was aware of had ever needed more than one imperial army. As we were headed for the received coordinates, I started to eavesdrop to the rumors circulating amongst the Slaneth crew, and my hopes rekindled these Terrans seemed truly formidable. Apparently they had dozens of planets under their control and they had managed to firmly expel the first army from their territory. As we approached the Terran territory, more information was uploaded into our computers, and I had already received orders to calibrate our translator for the Terran language. It was then that I found out that the Imperial First Army's flagship had been destroyed hence the need for me to be the translator as I worked on my machine. I couldn't believe my ears the Slanoth were planning to make peace with the Terrans sure, they were only planning to keep peace until they would gather overwhelming forces or find some technological advantage. But, as far as I could tell, right now, they were almost afraid of the Terrans finally, our fleet arrived at the border with the Terrans, the remains of the Imperial First Army joined us as well as the remains of the second army apparently the second army had boldly tried to accomplish what the first army couldn't and was also pushed back in tatters facing the slanoth ships were thousands of metal gray terran ships bristling with turrets and gun ports a huge armada the ships were in various sizes but in general they looked bigger and sturdier than the bloody design of the slanoth ones i was in awe staring mouth agape through the viewport at the majestic view in front of us the growl of the captain startled me from my reverie to and when will the translator machine be ready i need more terran speech samples master i stammered the machine needs more information about their behavior about the way they communicate otherwise we will only be able to transmit basic words like surrender destroy War, no stopped me the Slanoth captain, in somewhat a worried tone. We need to properly transmit our willingness to cease fire, to peace. The captain spoke the words with a grimace, like they left a sour taste in his mouth. You will have access to all information we gathered about these Terrans. We hacked into one of their data networks, so you will have all the speech samples you require. Your machine will be ready in 20 hours I don't need to tell you what happens if you fail to be ready. Do I know, master? The machine will be ready I bowed, and hurried to my console. I spent the entire 20 hours in fascination, browsing the information downloaded from Terran Network. The translation machine was calibrated in the first hour, but I kept that fact to myself, as I studied everything I could about these people. Because now I was sure of one thing, right now, and here, the Terrans were stronger than the Slanoth. A ceasefire would only allow the Slanoth to find a way to defeat them in time. It was my duty as the diplomat to prevent a diplomatic solution to this conflict. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedlier.co.uk. One stop shop for Kumjar models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and dnd 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeercontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Our diplomatic delegation was comprised of the captain, his second in command, two shock troopers, and myself, dragging the translator unit. We had to meet on a Terran ship as they absolutely refused to trust us. This fact was made even more clear when all weapons were removed from the four Slanoth members of the delegation. As one of the Terran soldiers was patting me for concealed weapons, I got a really close look at them. They were in different sizes, with clear sexual dimorphism, but, in general, they were twice the size of a Tuan or a Slanoth hunter, even the Slanoth shock troopers, who were doing their best too bristle up and look more imposing 
seemed rather small compared to these muscled giants. The soldiers that disarmed us were equipped with what looked like half their body weight and gear their rigorous patting for weapons, while very professionally done, probably left me bruised in several places. And I couldn't be happier because Aslanoth seemed as impressed with the Terrans as I was we were lead into a meeting room to meet with their delegation. The admiral of the fleet that was currently facing us, two captains, one male, one female, from two of their ships, and a diplomat with a strange, dark skin. As the two parties faced each other, I scrambled to bring the translator in the middle, and then handed an earpiece to each of them. When it was all set, the Terran diplomat broke the silence. Hello, I am sorry, but we will have to wait just a couple more minutes before starting these. Peace talks. The lady governor of the planet Pandana insisted she would participate, and she is already on her way. Why should we wait for some governor growled the Slanoth captain. We command the warships. This can be settled between us well, because the planet Pandana is the planet your forces had landed on before the fleet arrived, because she lost a lot of civilians to that unprovoked attack, and frankly, because I am afraid to say no to her answered the diplomat, with a grin at the end. Ah, seems she is already here, he said, hearing some booming footsteps somewhere behind a double door to the right. Said doors suddenly slammed open and a huge, scowling, Terran woman barge inside, hungry eyes locked on the Slanoth delegation. Her presence filled the room. She wasn't just really tall, she was big all around thick and muscled legs that stretched the material of her uniform long strong arms with palms bigger than my entire head a wild mane of pitch black hair and you know how i instantly recognize her as female her chest entered the room a full second before she did and all the slanoth in the room were positively drooling look at all that meat the second in command said with a glossy look I decided right then and there that she was perfect the lady governor had reached us by now, and was looming over, well, over everyone. These are the FKs in command she growled. Her growl was worthy of a veteran pack leader. What did that one say to me she demanded, pointing a log of a finger at the second in command. I snapped into motion and hurried to bring her an earpiece. She picked it up, and put it in her ear. As soon as she fixed it. I was more than happy to answer her question. The second in command was just admiring how much me too posses she looked at me in disbelief. Then turned towards the second in command. What? She asked menacingly, dragging the word, as to give him time to explain himself. A thick vein was pulsating on her forehead, but the second in command was too stupid or maybe too hungry I don't know exactly how his mind worked at that point. But he was not very inspired in his answer. He mumbled and gestured towards her, spit drooling from his maw. I mean, look at all this. Blood of the huge woman managed to take a single step towards the Slanoth, before the Terran diplomat jumped in her way, with arms extended, stopping her. Please, Lady Governor, this is a diplomatic meeting. Out of my way Thomas that Efka just called me a piece of meat and fat while the diplomat was trying to placate the lady governor. I leaned towards the drooling second in command and whispered in his ear. He grinned. Turn around. Woman I want to see how big you really are the human admiral. And the two captains audibly sighed at this. Defeated. While the lady governor took two more steps towards the Slanoth delegation. The Terran diplomat was clinging to her like a baby Turek to his mother. He was carried along, powerless against her advance. The woman's left arm snaked forward with surprising speed and grabbed the second in command by the neck. She lifted him with ease and brought his snout in front of her face. What? Did. You. Say she said the word slowly, without opening her jaws. Just. Sounds between gritting teeth. Struggling to breathe. The idiot managed a ragged answer. Your. Back. Side. Must. Be. Huge. Hearing this, the Terran diplomat carefully let go of his grip, and scuttled back, towards the admiral and the captains. The lady governor extended her left arm a bit, with the slanoth still dangling in her grip, at the end of it, and slowly lifted her other arm up in the air, and then there was a loud sound. 
Like when you drop something flat and really heavy on an empty room floor. She slapped him. She slapped him so hard, it knocked him unconscious. One of the most dangerous predators I have ever seen, Scourge of my galaxy, was knocked out cold with one single slap. She opened her left palm and let him fall on the floor like a bundle of rags. His jaw was hanging, but not exactly anatomically correct. The entire Slanoth party started to growl menacingly and to bristle up. The Terran woman gave zero indications of giving a shit, and was facing the remaining three Slanoth with an impressive scowl, and fists planted on her hips. I hurried next to the captain and started to frantically whisper, Master, if we want peace, you need to defuse the situation tell her, firmly, to calm down, and assert dominance, by calling her something demeaning. Like a female canine the captain straightened himself, bravely stepped between his pack and the woman, and growled at her, calm down, bitch.